Thistledown Gang, welcome back to my channel if you've already been here. If not, hello, it is absolutely lovely to have you here and I hope we can enjoy your presence for a tiny bit longer. And today I'm bringing you a little thrift haul of all the treasures that I have found um, between, you know, my last thrift haul and now. Today we are uh, in this little lovely pillow fort here that I have made out of um, part of, of my thrift haul actually. Um, this is a beautiful beautiful bed sheet that I found um, even before the pandemic began and I am absolutely in love with the pattern um, and I thought hey why, why not make a pillow fort out of it. Um, the back of the pillow fort these were curtains and um, one of them is currently our sofa cover. You actually know that from my last video. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Um, it kind of screams Lolita dress, but I'm not really into that at the moment. So, But on to the actual thrift haul. So noisiest thing first. Noisiest thing first, um, I bought this while on a trip to Hamelin, you know, the one with the Pied Piper. Um, and I mainly bought it because I, I like the belt and then I grew somehow attached to this heart. I'm not quite sure what to make of that because this is actually a bit kitschy even for me. But it's kind of cute and um, actually the silver belts uh, remind me of the, I think it's Child Ballad 37, Thomas the Rhymer, because the Fairy Queen's horse has um, 50 silver bells and 9 in her horse's mane. And while I do not have the grass green dress of the Fairy Queen, um, well I do have this grass green tent and um, I also have grass green shoes. Well not entirely grass green, they're more like a dark kind of mint, but aren't they incredibly lovely? Um, I was very happy to have found them. They are genuine leather, rather heavy um, and I've wanted a pair of brogues for a long long time and these actually fit me very well. I know that I said in my five things I'm not buying uh, this year video that I wouldn't um, buy thrifty shoes, but these are actually hard enough so that they are not very much broken in and um, by that I mean I can break them in myself and therefore not ruin my knee any further. They will be a really lovely addition to my wardrobe, masculine and feminine alike. And while we're uh, at the clothing, I might as well show you this, a shirt waist or corset cover sort of top. It is just a, just a white lacy top, but styled in the right way. This is perfect for uh, Edwardian history bounding. It already has those lace insertions and the idea is to add sleeves and maybe even a color to this um, and also probably dye it um, to wear it in lieu of a, uh, of a flannel. You know, I'm, I'm not quite sure if I should promise you a video on this because yes, I want to make one but every time I say oh there's gonna be a video on this, this video doesn't really happen um, and that annoys me a lot. Another flannel substitute would be this lacy sweater. I have been searching for something like this for quite a while now. I actually wanted something a bit thicker and I might still keep my eyes open for that um, but the plan is to also dye this and maybe embroider it. I'm not quite sure what color to dye this though and if you have any ideas please let me know in the comments because I really can't decide. And what would be a thrift haul of mine without tins? So first up we have this classically shaped coffee tin. Um, I don't really drink coffee. I like coffee but I can't really drink it. Um, and I really like the uh, the Jugendstil. It's not quite Art Nouveau. It's a bit too chunky, a bit too too bold for Art Nouveau. Um, so we have these Jugendstil ornaments here, and um, I'm not quite happy with the lid. I might actually take it off because it is just red plastic, and then use this as a um, 
as a container of sorts. Maybe I'll, I can convince my boyfriend to put it in the kitchen for all the, um, the cooking um, supplies like, you know, wooden spoons and things like that. I think that would actually look kind of nice. My second tin is this kitschy Pujo affair. And I don't really care much for for these. I mean, they are kind of cute. I might actually decoupage something over them at some point. But the thing, the actual reason why I bought this tin is this. I have no idea how this is in other countries, but here in Germany, um, I find these around midwinter most of the time. And these are cookie tins with built-in music boxes. And I'm absolutely delighted at this one. I can't really um, pinpoint the the melody. Um, and if you know what it might be, please let me know in the comments as well. Uh, but I'm absolutely in love with it. I have a few ideas what I can make with this. Um, and then just, you know, again, use this, but um, just as a, as a thing that I put somewhere and then put something in there. And speaking of music boxes, this is not the only one. I was really, really blessed uh, when I came to, uh, to thrifting lately. And um, I found this lovely little trinket case. Uh, it has a ballerina on top. It has a goose on the back. It should probably be, not be a swan, but it, it, for me, it, it is a goose. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, and then we have a castle at the side. So we have a very classical um, trinket jewelry box here. It has an additional drawer on the bottom, probably for uh, for brooches and the like. And um, on top it has a space for rings and some smaller things. Pro probably, I, I think that's where where the necklaces go. I have no idea. I actually, never had a decent jewelry box before and yes I am going to mod this because yes it is very charming but it doesn't really fit the aesthetic of my chambers so um, yeah I'm, I can't actually wait to, to do this. It's gonna be so good. And uh, speaking of jewelry um, of course I found some. First up we have this crescent that is actually the latest edition and it has a, a little bird on it. it. It reminds me a bit of a quail. Um, I do like quails. I actually kind of toy with thoughts of, of getting some at some point because they are being adorable. They look like little dinosaurs. They are so, so cute. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, also it's a crescent. I just like moons. What can I do? I also have a strand of pearls. These are glass pearls um, coated in wax, so very, very classically. Because uh, I think they're called Renaissance pearls uh, sometimes, but they are very heavy. They're not the super cheap kind, so I like that. And I do like pearls that are not just white. Um, these are green, and I think they might make a nice addition to Antonia Cecilia's uh, wardrobe. Another thing that has a uh, quite obvious predisposition to end up with Antonio Cecilia is this lovely little uh, brooch with a white rose. It does have a few little broken off pieces, but actually that for me just adds to the charm. Um, and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It matches her so well, it matches me very well too. Um, and I'm very happy I found this one, as well as these lilac uh, glass earrings. Um, I really do like them. I don't have a lot of purples in my wardrobe, so I don't really mind um, changing that in some way. And these might actually be a good start. 
Something else that actually fits well into these last two items is this brooch, which has three Macintosh roses on it. I'm not quite sure if this is a museum replica or something else, but um, well, the roses are very, very obviously uh, Macintosh inspired, um, and uh, it is somewhere on the verge between Art Nouveau and Art Deco. It matches very well a lot of my blouses and it actually features in my last video as well. I pinned it to, to the front of my chemise there. And last in the jewelry department is this little hat pin um, that I might actually, uh, actually paint at some point because I'm not too fond of the blue. So there's a, there's a tiny story why I desperately wanted hat pins uh, lately and that is um, we have a customer at one of our markets, a regular, and um, she does wear berets and then pins them down in the front so they basically look like, like caps, like flat caps. Um, and I think that is so cute, and I definitely want to try that out. And so I do need, uh, I do need a hat pin or two. And um, I was very happy to find these for I think 50 cents, uh, because you don't find them that often. And uh, yeah, that made me happy. And I also found this voter hat, which is very much a welcome addition to my wardrobe. I don't really have summer hats that I wear regularly. I have a few winter hats that work very well for my everyday attire, but broader rimmed straw hats don't really, ugh, a bit unwieldy at times. And um, this one works very well. And I was looking for a boat online. And when I found this at a local thrift store, I said, hey, okay, why not, why not? take something pre-loved instead of buying something new. And um, that is why I now have a boat hat. And now for something completely different that made me very happy. And that is I actually found Legends of the Guard. This is the first volume of the uh, of the Mouse Guard anthologies. And uh, Mouse Guard is one of my favorite comics. It is so beautiful. It is a, if you don't know it yet, it is basically uh, Brambley Hedge meets Game of Thrones. It is a bit like Red Wall, but without any other animals living there, and it is not as fluffy most of the time. It is a bit more dire and hard, um, <laughs> and it's it's really really lovely. If you don't know it, um, you should definitely check it out. And I found this for 750. Uh, and usually um, this would have cost 25 euros, um, so I was kind of kind of happy to um, to find it. And yeah, this was still not in my collection, so lucky find. And also, I try not to show you as much of my um, notions and fabric that I thrift because I do that all the time. Um, but this lace is so pretty that I had to include it. It is beautiful quality and so I had to take it home. And last, uh, but of course not least, we have two items that belong in the kitchen. First of all, we have this trivet that will not end up in the kitchen, however, um, because I will probably use it as a printing block. Um, I do like the, the spades design here. And I always keep a lookout for metal trivets because they are very well suited to printing. Um, and I kind of, kind of like the idea of a dress with a border print made out of this. Nating. And the very last thing is this, and this is a facsimile cookbook of something that was originally published in 1898. And when I saw this, I definitely knew I had to have it. It is from a, I think, Bavarian um, cook and a pastry maker from the 19th century and uh, 
it is a very beautiful facsimile. Um, kind of kind of works for me, and uh, the recipes are very very short, and I think they mostly assume that the reader already knows what to do, but. I am so excited to try these because I think um, I can learn so much from them and baking always makes me happy. So uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to try this. Um, let me know if you if you want, I don't know, a video on me trying these, these out. Um, and that, I fear, my friends, is it for this haul. Um, I think it was long enough. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you really liked um, of the haul in the comments. Let me know what your last treasures were that you found. Um, I love hearing about them. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. And um, take care of yourself, take care of others. Compassion is one of the most important things in this world. And um, I'll see you all next time. Stay enchanted. Bye.